All right, Amen. So, Miss so right. no, so yeah. Oh my gosh, so excited to have one of our uh, our dearest friends, Miss Sonia Dove, who's going to walk us through uh, upstyling from a color aspect, which is kind of a different angle. Which I really love that she was excited to jump on this. Um, and uh, we'll bring her on now and let her let her talk to us about her friendship with Sharon and how uh, she was inspired to give you something um, with regards to upping your upstyle game, but from a color perspective. So Sonia. Hi everyone. Thank you for having me, uh, both of you. And wow, I just heard learned such a lot watching Sharon. And I have taken one of her boot camp classes and it was the best thing I ever did. It was incredible, it really was. Thank you, Sharon, for sharing your knowledge. So talking about colour with upstyles, and uh, I'm going to be sharing you with you a technique and it's called it's all about minimum placement but maximum effect and uh, the reason I came up with this technique is when I work uh, many people don't realize I do work in Ulta in Santa Monica I work there all the time and a lot of my clients have got very long hair California and I started to ask a question how much time do you wear your hair up compared to being down. And I was astonished at the amount of time they wear it more up than they would down. So it got me thinking, well, I better get my game on with placement. So this technique is about uh, for that client that's very busy. So ask your guests in the salon how often they wear their hair up. Uh, they might say 50%, 60 70 if it comes to be 50% or more, this is an ideal technique for you to share with your clients. If they wear it more down, then there's other opportunities. So I wanted to um, show you the sectioning. This is a mannequin that I have. And what I'd like to do, we start very, very thin on the front. So the front section is about quarter an inch thick. And then as we get further around, it gets bigger, bigger, bigger. And then finally, going to the back, my guideline is the occipital bone. So anything from the occipital bone down is where I leave out. Because this is the hair that I'm going to colour. So skinny at the front, getting more, more, more. Maximum in the uh, back area. And then back around to the other side. Now, that looks easy, doesn't it? But guess what? It's really easy on a mannequin because the mannequin hairline is wefted very, very strong. But we know on our guests and our clients with longer hair, like my hair, for instance, I have areas that recede back and then I have areas that are thinner, more dense. So what you have to do, and this is the big, big aha moment. Don't look at the sectioning here. Look at the perimeter haircut. So what you might get if you section it evenly all the way around like that, you might look at the perimeter haircut and see short, long, short, long and it really does not work well with this technique what you have to look is you have to pull enough hair out that you can see the haircut edge all the way around if that makes sense so don't look here look how it lays here as an example yes i ask you a question as i didn't mean to yes. interrupt but i'm thinking about no, no of course so I get that you want to be able to see the perimeter line, right? That's the idea all the way around. Yes. But does it work yes. on all textures or is it only intended for thicker textures or could it be worked on more skinny hair? What is your recommendation there? It works on different textures. You will actually find the thicker the hair, the less you're going to have out. The thinner the hair, the more you have out. Like an example, let's take someone with a receding hairline, like my, mine here, what it will actually be to fill in that area that is thinner, which is usually on the temporal area here, you will have to go up in and pull hair out into that section. Now, thank goodness this um, model has three legs and... Um, 
no heartbeat, but I am pulling out my section <laughs> out because I did a lovely, I did a lovely tight top knot, but I do want to share with you what it could possibly <laughs> It's okay. She's going to still pay me $1,000 for my service. She super loves me. So the so section you're you're pulling this might section be... Out. Let me just add, I would imagine that with the finer to medium textured hair, that this would actually give the illusion with this placement that the hair is actually thicker when it's done than it actually is. Am I right? A hundred percent, Nick, a hundred percent. But that might be your sectioning. It might go across, up, go here. Where the ear is, you might want more. So you have to scoop more out. So what you're looking at all the time, you're trying to fill in a nice strong line on the perimeter. So um, that's the sectioning. So always look at the perimeter, maximum here. And you know why the maximum amount of hair is at the back here? I'm sure many of you know that when you have a client with long hair, sometimes in the nape, there's breakage there, the shorter hair. Sometimes the hair here doesn't reach all the way down to their back. Maybe it just reaches to here. So you have to have a lot out of the back. So that's the sectioning. Now I have another mannequin uh, ready. And this like, is like a cooking mannequin. show. This is cooking a cooking show. show. So this is my mannequin with my foils in. And um, what I've done is the hair that's left out, it is just foiled and it is a heavy weave with hair left out in between all the way through, all the way round. I've used my lovely half foils. I love my foils, female foils, all the way round there. So it, you can do a slice or a weave, but do not do the whole section. You do need to leave hair out in between because the whole idea when that client pulls her hair up into a ponytail, she needs to have the highlights running all the way through her to the end of her ponytail. That's why we do a lot of our highlights around the perimeter hair. So I've left myself a section here to color because this is the hardest part where you've got the um, sort of sideburn area. And I am using Blondor Powder Lightener here. I'm a, a Weller addict. This is Weller Blondor Powder. And I'm mixing it with 20 volume developer. It's my go-to lightener. It's the best lightener in the world. Sorry for that plug, shamelessly. But there we are. We have it in Ulta, so <laughs> well, I feel good. Have it, but we'll argue so, you. <laughs> so, in the areas that you've got more density, like here on the sides, this area is going to take at least three or four rows. But on the front here, you only need one section, hence the section at the front. So on the side, if I move that out of the way, let me move my lovely mannequin so you can see. Let's, I start on the underneath first and I pin my hair up with uh, my clips. These are the uh, only clips I have at home, but uh, it feels good because they're my, my dear friends, Candy Shaw. And here, we, I just do a heavy weave. So if you're a slicer, you can still slice. Then putting in my foil, I'm at a diagonal, placing my foil in and going in with my lightener all the way through. Now, saturation is key. We all know that. Really applying that lightener through, all the way through the hair. And this is a very simple technique, but guess what? I use it so much in the salon because reality is in California, we have, I have a lot of long hair clients. The other opportunity for doing this technique is kids when they're off from school for summer break, which is not what's happening at the moment. But um, <laughs> when young, some of my young clients, 
10, 11 and 12, they want to experience colour and their parents don't want them to get too addicted to colour, but they do know that if they don't allow them the opportunity to try colour, they're just going to go and try it themselves. I do this on my very young clients. They wear it all summer. What's lovely about this technique, it looks amazing when the hair's all pulled back, like how Sharon did her beautiful upstyling. Also, it looks fabulous in a top knot, but it also looks amazing down because it looks like a peekaboo. And um, I'm not sure if we had any imagery uh, show up. Yeah. But, um, we'll yes, roll them again. It. Okay. Yeah, keep going. we we'll roll them again. But this is a technique not only for upstyling, but for down. And remember, when your guest is in your chair next, when we're back in full steam in the salon, hopefully soon, um, ask them when they've got long hair, ask them how often they wear their hair up. Because you know what? Some of the clients are a little bit afraid to tell you. Because I found that with my own guests, that they wanted to tell me they wear it down most of the time. But actually, reality, with busy, busy lifestyles and things to do and work and kids and their, um, whatever they're doing, most women throw their hair up in a ponytail more often than us hairdressers like to think. And that's what made me get into coming up with this technique. So just in the head, you know, a lot of people are wearing their hair up and they need color that's going to really um, unfold as, as you do the dress work. But tell me how this will look for someone who wants to wear their, maybe their hair down during the day and up at night. We know how beautiful it's going to look pulled back away from the face. But what will this do for the face frame with the hair down? Well, face framing with the hair down, it's going to look like an internal peekaboo. So it's going, the colour's going to lie underneath all the way around the sides. So when they blow dry their hair back, or if they style their hair with a curling iron, you'll see that beautiful colour peek, uh, peek through. The key is, though, uh, Nick, if I may say, is the very, very front section is extremely skinny and very, very thin. If it's not thin, it tends to look a little bit 80s, like the old Debbie Harry, like used to be. So start off seamlessly thin and then get thicker and thicker as your sections go all the way round. Um, the other thing is I'm using lightener here. And once um, the pictures that you've been showing, once I took off my lightener, I then coloured the hair with orange and red. So it, would, it can have some fun colours as well. You can do it in pastels or you can just do it with straight colour. But um, it's a fun technique and you're looking at about 15 foils maximum. Yeah. Minimal effort, maximum result. And here, Nick, you can just see on the very front section, it's my last section here, it's just one section for one foil. So it is, it's about quarter an inch thick. Um, I'm, I'm a lover of weaving. Uh, so, uh, but if anyone slices, you could do that. But the whole idea of leaving some natural out is so it has a seamless blend into the person's natural hair going back. So just put that in. Yeah, lovely. Sonia, and, uh, that looks so on... easy, so good. And actually, I'm like in the, the front foil because it's making me feel like even though the face framing will be internal, that one almost will, will be on trend, almost like a money piece, right? So if they push their hair back and put their hair still down, those front highlights will accent like kind of like that uh, that front piece that's very on trend right now. That is correct. 